In part 1 of the electron configuration tutorial, we looked at how to find the configurations for carbon and sulfur. Before moving on to a more complex example such as bromine, let's understand the placement of the d-block. Now it appears that the d-block shows up at principal energy level number 4. However, it is actually part of principal energy level number 3, and the only reason it's written lower on the table is because a 3d orbital has more energy than a 4s orbital. And according to the outbound principle, you fill from lower energy followed by higher energy, and so you fill 4s and then 3d. The first d level is 3d, then we have 4d, 5d, and 6d. Going back to the bromine example, Let's find the configuration by identifying all the electrons that are passed along the way. So on principal energy level number one, we pass two electrons, which gives me a 1s2. In principal energy level number two, we have two electrons in the s block and six electrons in the p block, giving me 2s2 and 2p6. In the third principal energy level, we pass two in the s block and six in the p block, giving me 3s2 and 3p6. In the fourth principal energy level is where you have to be careful. We start out with 4s2 and then continue with 3d10 and not 4d10. And finally, we reach the bromine atom in the 4p orbital, giving me 4 5. One thing I forgot to mention in the last video is that you can verify the electron configuration by adding up all the superscript numbers and ensuring that it adds up to your electron number. So for bromine we have 2, 2, 6, 2, 6, 2, 10, and 5. Adding them up we get a total of 35 which is the atomic number for bromine. And so the electron configuration for bromine is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d10, 4p5. Wow, that was a really long address. And if I ask you to do any larger atom, the address is going to be ridiculously long. But luckily, there is a shortcut. And this takes into account the understanding of how the configuration was found. If we look back at the atom lithium, the electron configuration is really the same as the noble gas helium plus one electron. And if we look at the configuration of sodium, it's the same as the noble gas neon plus one electron. The idea here is that if you pass a noble gas and you know that the electron configuration is the same as the noble gas plus valence electrons, then instead of writing the entire long address, you can write the noble gas followed by valence electrons. How can we justify this? Everything inside beneath the valence electrons is called your kernel. So your kernel is going to include your nucleus plus your noble gas configuration. If we specify the kernel of a noble gas, everything within that atom is going to be self-understood. So where do we find the outer electrons. The valence electrons of any atom are the outermost S and P electrons. Looking back at my carbon example, the previous noble gas is helium, and that gives me the kernel, and the valence electrons are the S and P found in principal energy level number two. That gives me a condensed formula for carbon, which is helium in brackets, followed by 2s2 and 2p4. Looking back at my sulfur example, the previous noble gas is neon, and the outermost electrons are the 3s2 and 3p4 electrons. This entire kernel gets replaced by neon in brackets, followed by 3s2, 3p4. The shortcut is a lot more visible for something larger like bromine. We look back and see that argon is our previous noble gas, and the valence electrons are the 4s and 4p. 
Recall that 3D is in a lower shell and so we don't count it. And all these internal electrons are now replaced by argon in brackets, followed by 4s2, 4p5. Now isn't that so much simpler? Looking back at the dreaded iodine, it's not so scary after all. We identify krypton as the previous noble gas and then simply follow it with 5s2 and 5p5. And for our final example, let's take a look at Pb, or lead. We identify the previous noble gas as xenon, and then simply follow it by 6s2 and 6p2. Be sure to join me in upcoming videos where I talk about the octet rule and the Lewis dot structure for atoms. I hope you enjoyed this video. Test your knowledge of this topic by taking the free quiz link below. And don't forget to like and share this video with your friends. Have questions? Post them in the comments below or use the contact form on layofersci.com forward slash contact. I also offer online private tutoring via Skype. For a full list of subjects covered and additional study information, visit me at layofersci.com.